Hello, and welcome to ServiceNow.com's SAML 2.0 integration demo with SSO Circle. For this demo, we're going to use a public facing website called SSOCircle.com. Uh, this website serves as a, a free public identity provider for those individuals that like to test out their SAML 2.0 implementations against a, an identity provider. Now when we create an SSO Circle account, we're going to be required to enter in an email address. That email address has to be valid as they will do some email uh, validations. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to use a temporary email address service that will allow me to receive emails for about 45 minutes so that I can get that link, the activation link from SSO Circle. Now that I have a temporary email address called john at explodemail.com, I'm going to go to SSO Circle and create an account. and we'll provide that fake email address that we created before. We're going to agree to the terms of use and we'll return to the login page. We'll now need to wait for a few minutes for that validation email to come from SSO Circle. It looks like the validation email has arrived. We'll click show to look at it and we'll find our link. There's our link right there. We'll copy that link and we'll paste it in the browser. And now we see that our account has been activated. The next steps are to get our SAML 2.0 plugin set up on the ServiceNow instance to communicate properly with your identity provider. The first step is to request the SAML 2.0 plugin for your instance. Once you have done this, you should be able to go to your instance and type in SAML in the uh, search bar of the navigation pane. Then you'll see the SAML2 single sign-on application with its different modules here. The first module that we're going to start out with will be the properties module. We're going to now want to go to our identity provider and browse the metadata to grab a few URLs uh, that we'll need to set on the ServiceNow instance. In order to do this, we're going to go to idp.ssocircle.com and you'll receive an XML document that describes the metadata for your identity provider. The two URLs that we're interested in are the base URL to our auth and request service as well as the URL to our single logout request service. Now we use the HTTP redirect binding for SAML 2.0 and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for redirect in this XML document and the first redirect that I come up to is the single logout service so that's one of the URLs that we're looking for so I'm going to just copy that URL here and paste it on the single logout request service uh, property we're going to paste that there and then we're going to go to the next redirect that we'll do a SAML authentication and that is the single logon service single sign-on service and so we're going to grab that URL there and we're going to paste it in the authn request property in our properties and then we'll click save now just a quick note your SAML2 plugin comes pre-filled with these uh, settings for SSO circle uh, but I wanted to show you kind of how to find those uh, URLs in your IDP metadata. Now that we have set up the identity provider URLs in the properties page, we're next going to configure our instance URLs. Now in order to do this, we're going to come look at these two URLs right here and right here. Uh, the SAML2 plugin comes pre-filled with these demo uh, instance URLs. You'll replace yours, uh, you'll replace this with your instance prefix. Let's say your instance is mycompany.servicenow.com. You'll just come here and you'll change that prefix to match your own. Now the next step is to set up our name ID policy 
within the instance to match the name ID policy that is going to be used by the identity provider. We'll also want to specify the user table field that will contain the token that's being passed from the identity provider into our ServiceNow instance. Now to do this, we're going to go to our IDP metadata page once again, and we're going to search for name ID format. And you'll see that our metadata with SSO Circle provides a number of out-of-the-box uh, name ID formats. Uh, for this example, we're going to use the email address format, so we're just going to copy uh, that URN string, and we're going to come over to our properties page, and we're going to paste it in the name ID policy field. Now, with uh, how it's set up with this identity provider is if we use this URN for the name ID policy, uh, the IDP uh, SSO circle in this case is going to send the user's email address that logs into the IDP and so we want to match in that token with the email field in our user table. This field, it, now if the IDP were going to send back a username then we would want to change, the, change this to be the user name field in the user table but since we're going to, since we're going to be receiving an email address uh, we're going to use the email field and then we just click save on this property. The next step is to take the certificate from the IDP and install that into our instance so that we can verify uh, assertions coming from the IDP into ServiceNow. So to do this we're going to go to our IDP metadata once again and we're going to look for the signing uh, X509 certificate and we will copy that string and then we'll come into our ServiceNow instance and inside of our SAML2 application there's a certificate link. We will click on that. Now uh, the, the plugin comes automatically pre-filled with an SSO Circle certificate but for the purposes of this demo we're going to still set it. So in order to set it we're going to in between the begin certificate and end certificate um, lines we're going to go ahead and paste that certificate string. You'll need to make sure that it's a PEMS certificate string. You'll need to make sure it's formatted properly. Sometimes when you copy and paste it from your browser uh, from an XML document it doesn't uh, quite work. You have to massage it a little bit to make sure you have your your line breaks and your begin and end certificate. But uh, then we just uh, click save and upon clicking save it's going to automatically populate all these fields for you. Now that we have the proper settings in our properties inside of our instance, now we're going to share the metadata, our service provider metadata, with our IDP SSO circle. We'll do this by going to our sing SAML single sign-on application and clicking the metadata link here. And we'll just take and copy our auto-generated metadata. And then we'll need to go into uh, SSO Circle itself. So we'll go to ssocircle.com. We're going to log in as that user that we created. And once we log in, we'll see our user profile page. Uh, here we'll look for the link called Manage Metadata. And we'll click on that. And we can add a new service provider right here. So we'll click on that. We need to enter in the uh, instance name. So if yours is my company, you would type my company dot service now dot com. And then you would paste that metadata that you copied from your instance. And then we click submit. Now we should have the IDP uh, configured for uh, sending SAML assertions to our instance. And we should have our instance configured to send the auth in request, the logout request. Uh, to the SAML IDP. Now what we need to do is since we're using an email token back and forth uh, the IDP is going to say okay uh, this person authenticated here's their email address we're going to take their email address and match it uh, to a user record. We need to make sure that there's a user in the system then that has the email address of the user that we created in SSO Circle. So we're going to go to our user table 
and we're going to choose one of these users. This is all just demo data. Uh, we'll choose a user such as David Liu. I'm going to change his email address to be john at explodemail.com since that's the email address that's going to come over from SSO Circle. Now that we have everything set up on both the service provider and the identity provider, it's time to give it a try and see how it works. So in order to do this, we just uh, go to our instance. And if yours is mycompany.servicenow.com, that's where you would go. I'll go to my development instance uh, URL here. And what happens is we, uh, your instance will notice that you're not authenticated and it's going to package up an, what we call an auth -N request and then it's going to redirect us to the IDP, which is SSO Circle here. So what we do now is we're going to log into the IDP as that user that we created. And once we log into the IDP, it's going to authenticate against its user store and then it's going to redirect with our email address to the instance. The instance will then find that email address and find the user that's associated with it and authenticate us as that user. As you can see here, it found that David Liu was the user that had that email address. And so now we're authenticated as David Liu. Now if we were to come out of here, let's say that we want to just go to, uh, we want to browse ServiceNow and, and look at its website and stuff. If we come back later um, to our instance, we're already logged in and so we'll stay logged in. Uh, if we click log out right here, it'll log us out both out of the instance as well as out of the IDP itself. And there's properties and stuff that you can set it to tell it where to go uh, after the logout occurs as well. So in conclusion, uh, the main steps with setting up SAML 2.0 within your instance to work with an IDP is to first, you're going to request a SAML 2 plugin. Second, you're going to go for the IDP metadata and grab your authn request URL, your single logout request URL using the HTTP redirect binding. Uh, then you're going to configure the instant URLs in your properties to move them from the default demo uh, URLs to your instance URLs. You're going to set up the name ID policy so that it matches the name ID policy that you have set on your IDP and make sure that the user table field uh, matches the token that's going to be uh, sent over to ServiceNow in the SAML response. You're also, next, you're going to be installing the IDP certificate so that we can verify the signatures that come over uh, from the IDP. And finally, once that's all set up, you're going to generate the metadata on your ServiceNow instance and send it over to your IDP, which will configure the IDP uh, to know how it should send data to ServiceNow. And then you should be up and running. Thank you for joining me uh, in this demo for setting up ServiceNow to talk to an IDP using the SAML 2.0 plugin.